Good morning and welcome to worship. It is a gift to be gathered with you together in this place. With those gathering online and in this sanctuary, we come together to be the body of Christ, and I hope you feel at home here in our midst. I'm Pastor Molly Vetter, the senior pastor here at Westwood Church, and it's a great joy to welcome you. We celebrate the diversity of people who gather together as the body of Christ. And we believe that diversities of age and race, of gender identity and sexual orientation, make us a richer depiction of the beauty of God, that we see the image of God in one another, and we give thanks for the richness you've brought with you today. As we worship this morning, we're celebrating the liturgical holiday, Christ the King Sunday, celebrating Christ's reign in this world, calling us toward justice and love, Here in the U.S., we're celebrating Thanksgiving, offering gratitude for the gifts we enjoy, receive, share every day. This celebration crosses boundaries of religion and connects us together in a posture of gratitude. And I join you in giving gratitude today. This morning, I'm delighted to welcome a guest preacher to our congregation, the Reverend Dr. Cedric Bridgeforth, will offer our sermon today. He is the Director of Innovation and Communications for our California Pacific Annual Conference and a longtime friend of mine. I'm grateful for the way he will bring God's word to our gathering today, and I hope you will join me in welcoming him. We're glad to have the choir back singing together here on our chancel steps, and I trust that worship will be especially rich for you today. There are beautiful flowers on our altar, given by Rhonda Lawrence in memory of her mother, who would have been 98 today. But most of all, we give thanks for the beauty you've brought to this place. May the peace of Christ be with you. Will you stand if you're able?
Thanks be to God. You may be seated and let us pray together. Sovereign God, come to us now in silent, holy power. Still our distracted minds, our bruised hearts, our longing bodies. Then speak the power of Jesus' name in such a way that we might hear it, in such a way that we might bear it into the world as a people who seek not to preserve what we know, but to make palpable who you are. For we move and pray by the gift of your breath within us. Amen. Children. Pastor Cedric, you can join us if you want to. You don't have to. Have a seat. I think I see some more kids. Oh, I do see some more kids. I see Anna, Isabel, James, Luke, oh, Saoirse, Moxie, Ruth, Molly. <laughs> In the Bible, that was a long time ago when Jesus was being um, a preacher, kind of like Pastor Molly and Pastor Cedric this morning. Isabel, you want to sit with us, honey? Oh, Daddy wants to come. Um, people were sick sometimes. And in those times, they didn't have the doctors and the medical science that we have now. And so when, oh, yes, thank you, Dad. So when, when they would get sick, Sometimes they had to go off in another place. Like some of the people had what they call leprosy. That meant that it was a skin disease. It would get on their fingers and on their toes. It would get on their faces and all over their bodies. It was a horrible disease. And by law, they had to move away from everybody else. What's up, dear? The disease looked really, really bad because it would just make your fingers just almost fall off sometimes. Yeah, it was a bad disease. But now we have helpers. Now we have medical science uh, that help, right? Does the finger really come off? It just, no, I didn't know we were going to get into this, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> sometimes it does. And we will talk more about that later because I want to talk to you about the big healer. Anybody know whose name that is? Anna. God. Yes, and? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is always the right answer, right? Okay. So um, Jesus was a healer, and he came down from Galilee to Jerusalem. Isabel, can you see this? And James? Um, he came down and was walking down the road because there were no cars then. It was so long ago. And these, there were 10 men right there that said, Jesus, Master, come heal us. And so what do you think Jesus did? Do you think he walked right on? Moxie? He helped them. Yep, you betcha. He helped them. What, dear? They have bandages. What? They have bandages. Oh, they do? They have bandages? They wanted to, yeah, they wanted to hide or help their bodies to heal. And so he said he, to these 10 men that had leprosy, he said, go to the priest. And so they got up and they were, they were confused. Sisha, kind of like your face right now, kind of confused. So they were confused. What does that mean? So they started walking towards the priest because they trusted Jesus. And when, when they got up and walked a few paces, 
Then they were healed. Just right there on the road. Just right there. And they were so excited that they ran and went to tell all their family, right? Wouldn't you do the same thing? Yes. Well, right. But look what happened. There was one man that came to Jesus and said, thank you. Thank you for helping me. And he fell down even on the ground because he was so thankful that he wasn't sick anymore. But Jesus made him well. And Jesus said to him, weren't there 10 people that were healed? And he said, why would you, who is a foreigner from Samaria, why would you come back and thank me? And the man just looked at him and he probably thought, it's because I'm really, really, really thankful. So Thanksgiving is coming up. It's a time to be thankful. It's a very good time to be thankful. And I want to teach you just a little. <laughs> yes. I want to teach you um, a little uh, prayer that I want us all to do. Okay. So make your hands in a G. This is a G in sign language. Creator God. Oh, okay. Creator God. Okay. You got it, girl. You feed my soul with the whole earth you feed my soul with creatures that walk and swim and fly you feed my soul with the wind and the rain and the rain you feed my soul with the stars in heaven you feed my soul, and I grow strong in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit for all your gifts. Amen. Let's go in peace down that way. Listen for God's word from Psalm 93, as translated by scholar Robert Alter. The Lord reigns in triumph clothed. Clothed is the Lord. In strength, God is girded. Yes, the world stands firm, not to be shaken. Your throne stands firm from of old, from forever. You are the streams lifted up, O Lord. The streams lifted up their voice. The streams lift up their roaring. More than the sound of many waters, the sea's majestic breakers. Majestic on high is the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading is from John in chapter 18, beginning with verse 33. I invite you to listen for the word of God. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so are you a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. this morning, I first give praise and honor to God for another day, a day that none of us have ever seen before, a day that some of us thought we may never ever see. Oh, but here we are. And for that, we can give thanks. To be in this great congregation, sharing in this wonderful worship experience, is something we can give God thanks for as well. But I stand here today and I do so with a, shall we say, a heavy heart. As I shared with Pastor Molly, it was one of those Saturday nights where the Spirit wrestled me and said, oh, where we were going before is not where we're going now. So God help us. God be with us. Or we come to this text today in John's Gospel, John 8, 33 through 37. And we get into it this way. I was born two years and four months after the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Two years, four months after the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I grew up a mere 70 miles north of Birmingham, Alabama. And I have to confess and say that for the better part of my life, I, one, did not realize how close my birth was to his death, And secondly, I did not realize that I was growing up being shaped in and by a culture that did not affirm who I was. And so I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about identity is essential. Because identity is more important than who you agree with or who agrees with you. For I believe your identity informs your thoughts, your words, and your behavior. And yes, your behavior, your thoughts, and your words also informs your identity. Yes, it's Thanksgiving week, and we just shared with the children about what it is to be thankful. We're all getting getting ready to experience Thanksgiving in whatever way we can. I understand that we're buying more home test kits than we are turkeys right now. We know that Thanksgiving has been a tough holiday even long before COVID because of the political divides that exist. 
And now we go into it with separation fatigue and some with gathering anxiety. Longing for those times when we could all just get together around the table, enjoy some good food, find out who made that horrible potato salad, but enjoy it nonetheless. But it's difficult to get into this spirit of thanksgiving right now in the midst of just remembering all that is happening, acknowledging all that is happening and unfolding right around us. Julius Jones <laughs> comes to mind. The governor of Oklahoma <laughs> comes to mind. Of course, I think about killers being acquitted in Kenosha. I think about an ongoing trial of three executioners in Georgia. And that says something about identity. It says something about who we are and who we can and shall be. And we do this, yes, even on Christ the, Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year, because next Sunday is Advent, and we'll bring out all the trimmings, and we will talk about hope. Well, today we have this text in John's Gospel, where Pilate is examining Jesus, and he asks him, are you king of the Jews? And you may say, why in the world is this the Gospel reading for today? We're supposed to be focusing on Thanksgiving. We're supposed to be getting ready for the great festival of Christmas and leading us into Epiphany and on into the new year. Why in the world does this text land here? Well, I believe it lands here, and it stands out to me today, this year, like it never has before, because some of us are always on trial. Some of us are always being examined. Some of us are always being questioned. Some of us are always trying to figure out who we are, how we are seen, and how we are to show up in the world. Yeah, I was born two years and four months after the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I share that because sometimes those of my generation, and dare I say those before and most definitely those after, think the work of the civil rights movement was hundreds of years ago, if not thousands. And the truth of the matter is, as I look out over this congregation, I see that many of you lived in that time. You may want to nudge your neighbor and make sure we're still living in that time, right? <laughs> but we're not so far removed from racial strife, injustice, and struggle. And we don't have to go back to 1968 to realize that. We can log on our phones right now and see it in the current news feed. So when we come to this text here in John 8, through 37, we have already experienced the arrest of Jesus in the garden. Peter has started his litany of denials. The trial is underway. Peter denies again, and now we have Pilate questioning Jesus. And if you continue reading, you'll see that right after this exchange between Jesus and Pilate, the people say, give us Barabbas. And some of you know how that story goes. So when I was in college, I was blessed with the opportunity to serve as a summer missionary in the country of Botswana. 
which is in sub-Saharan Africa. And I went there as part of a music, drama, and Bible study team. Now, some of you know me, and you know that I do not sing. And my younger sister is much better at drama than I am. Yes, I said that publicly. So my role on the team was the Bible study and the preaching, although they did allow me to sing along with everyone else. But I went there as, on this mission team for music, drama, and Bible study. And while we were there, we were taken to Zimbabwe for a week of holiday. And while we were there in Zimbabwe for holiday, the person who was caring for the facility where we were staying invited us to his village for a festival. And the two missionaries who were leading us agreed that, you know, we would all go. And so we drove way out on the edge of the desert. I don't know where it was. It was far. It was dark. But when we got there, there was this large bonfire, and there were all these people, seemed like hundreds of people gathered around this bonfire, and they're drumming, they're singing, they're dancing, they're chanting, and there we are in the midst of it. And they marched these young men into the circle. And we're all encamped around those young men, singing, dancing, and chanting, I don't know the words, I just knew the rhythms, and I followed the beat. Well, in the midst of that, I looked over to my right, and uh, the missionary, uh, the wife of the missionary couple that was leading us was next to me, and she's crying, and I look over, and I'm like, Sally, what's, what's wrong? And she just continues to cry, and she's like, oh my, this is so sad. And I'm like, what, 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 what's there to be sad about? Now I'm bothered because I'm missing out on the beat and the chant and the singing to deal with her crying. But she's like, they'll never know the Lord. It's so sad. They'll never know the Lord. And I said, well, Sally, we don't know what they know. Well, <laughs> My venture as a missionary came to an end that night. <laughs> because from that point forward, for the remainder of our time, I was not allowed to preach. I was not allowed to teach. Because it was quoted that everyone knew the purpose of our mission was to save these people. They have to know Jesus. And my question was, how do we know what they know? <laughs> but here's the thing, and I'm going to bring all this back together. All these pieces are dangling out there. I'm going to bring them all back together. And if I don't or if I can't, Sharon Rhodes Wicked will come and save it, all right? <laughs> but there I was. I was told I could not preach and I could not teach Bible study for the remainder of our time there. And I said, fine, then I won't go anywhere. I will just stay home every day. And they said, fine. <laughs> but here's how God works. Here's how God works. Here I am in Botswana in the home of these two white Southern Baptist missionaries. On my first day, home alone, I think they used my life to make the movie. <laughs> but here I am, home alone, and I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm looking at the bookshelf of these two white missionaries. And down on the bottom shelf in the corner, I see this little spine of a book, and it reads, Black Theology and Black Power. And I, of course, questioned, why do they have this book on their bookshelf? I'd never seen that book before, I'd never heard of it, didn't know anything about it. So, of course, I pull it out and I started to read. And you know, as I started to read that book, I found out that what Dr. Cohn was teaching in black theology and black power was that God is on the side of the oppressed. And that it is the work, it is the call, it is the power of the oppressed to raise us all up to this, this knowing and to this knowledge of what it is to be the kingdom of God. 
And as I read through those pages, I wondered, had they ever actually read this book? Because if they had, would we have been there crying? Or would we have readily joined in the dancing and the singing and the chanting? Could we have more quickly gotten to a place of recognizing that it is the meek and the humble who indeed inherit and embody the kingdom of God? And it was in reading that book, in reading that book in the home of those missionaries all the way in Botswana, that I started to realize the significance of the fact that I was born two years and four months after the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it was in reading that book that I came to understand that my blackness mattered. In as many positive ways as it ever could in any negative way. And that's not to discount anyone else's identification, but it is to lift up and to value my own, which is my work to do. And it came by way of a horrific thing that happened in a desert in Zimbabwe. And yes, I had to wonder, given that I'd grown up a mere 70 miles north of Birmingham, why had I not had, why had I not gained this revelation before? And I still don't have an answer to that question. <laughs> but as I read this exchange between Jesus and Pilate, Pilate's trying to get Jesus to claim something of his identity and his purpose. And Jesus is trying to do the same with Pilate. Ultimately, the call here is to claim who we are and to know that there is power in being able to name and claim all of who we are and to know that sometimes that may come at a great price. Because right after this, the crowd says, give us Barabbas. But here's the thing. As we prepare to, well, not as we prepare, as we close out this Christian year, and we prepare to enter into an Advent season next Sunday, And how do we get to that place of hope? How do we get to that place of exuberance? When we live in a time and a space that for some, the law says your life doesn't matter. And for others, there are families who say your life is without value because you don't hold the same political views. <laughs> that we hold. And what about those for whom the church says your life or your lifestyle is a choice and therefore you're less than? How do we find hope in the midst of having to deny any part of who we are? So I would say the challenge here is to find that one part of you that you can celebrate, 
And you may be the only one who can celebrate it right now. But you name it. And you claim it for yourself. And then the challenge, I would say, is to share that with one other person. Because sometimes we spend a lot of time trying to get the whole family, or trying to get the entire community, or trying to get the whole denomination to say yes. When I believe there's power most often in the one. In the one person. The one conversation. The one space where we're truly seen. Included. Embraced. For all of who we are. Whether you're dancing and chanting and singing and drumming out on the edge of the desert. Or you're proclaiming Jesus right in the center aisle of Vaughn's. Or you're biting your tongue and biding your time just to get through this pumpkin pie before Uncle George spins out of control and you lose your ever-loving mind. You being able to sit in who you are and celebrate it, I've learned, is more important than anything else. It can save your life and it can give life to others as you live it out. Even if you have to stay home alone. Know that you may find the gift that you didn't even know was waiting for you. That will crack open even more goodness and greatness that is already within you. Break it open just for you to see. So that you can embrace it. And maybe, just maybe, that can be the hope that the world longs to experience. Thanks be to God.
Will you pray with me? Creator God, we give you thanks for the beauty of song, for the power and beauty of our choir of voices singing together, for the gift of a song that fills our bodies and our lives. We pray in thanksgiving this day for each morning that we rise and the food that we have to eat, for people with whom to share it. We praise you for healing wherever it's come, for hope in the midst of every despair, for forgiveness and grace that transform. We give you thanks for the beauty and particularity with which you've created each of us with our own beauty, our own identity. And in the richness of those identities, your presence is made known through us all. Black and white, Asian, Hispanic, Native American, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, cisgender, and straight, old, young, and middle-aged, we bear the beauty of your image where we are and as we are. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us know that we are beloved, that you would let your presence in us continue to be at work that we might not be satisfied to be as we are, but that we would be ready to break our hearts open to receive and share a greater love. We confess, O oh God, that we're in need of greater love and forgiveness and mercy. We've done things that have caused harm unintentionally and on purpose. We pray that you would forgive us We've participated in systems that have denied the humanity of others and robbed them of dignity and life. And we pray your forgiveness. Help us be ready to see and hear and believe the broken places in our institutions and hearts that are in need of your healing, that we might be a part of the work of love and justice in this world which is your work, which is the work we're called to as citizens of your holy kingdom. And on this Christ the King Sunday, we pray that you would indeed prepare us to participate in that beloved community you invite us to, being ready to dance to its rhythms and sing its song and share in the fullness of life you desire for all your children. And so we lift to you our prayers for everyone anywhere in need, for healing and hope and life. We trust that in you all things are possible. And together we lift our prayers as we speak again the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you're able, will you stand?
Amen. You may be seated. I want to thank you for being a part of our worship this morning. If you're participating online or here in the room, we're glad that you're a part of our community. And I encourage you always to go deeper in your life of faith and in connection to this congregation. If you're not already connected in, if you've been watching online or showing up here and we don't yet know each other, I encourage you to reach out. The easiest way to do that is at westwoodumc.org connect, where you can share information about yourself as well as prayer concerns. This morning, in addition to our regular tithes and offerings, we're collecting a Thanksgiving offering, which will be given to people in need in the community. You can participate in that by marking your gift for Thanksgiving offering, either in the offering plates here in the back, by mail, or through our website. There is lots of opportunity coming up in the next few weeks as we enter into the season of Advent and prepare for our Christmas celebration. You can join the choir, you can ring handbells, you can participate in at-home devotionals using the poetry of Mary Oliver. It begins next Sunday on the first Sunday of Advent, but you can pick up a devotional in the back of the sanctuary on the tables draped in black to take home so you're ready to start then uh, if you wish. I am grateful to Cedric for being with us this morning, for bringing the word, and for you all for helping uh, hear and receive the word of God today. Thank you for being a part of our church. And now as we prepare to go out into the brightness of this new day, a day that none of us have ever seen before, and yes, as I said earlier, a day that some of us thought we would never ever see. May we go forth into this day claiming the fullness of who we are, trusting that God did not make any mistakes in making us, but realizing that some may not always be able to receive us, but the gift is that we can name and claim who we are in God always and everywhere. May you be blessed as you give thanks. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.